Dell Optiplex 7020 Small Factory from Standard and Standard Plus. What's the main difference between these two? Which one I normally get? And let me help you make a decision which one you should get. So first of all, uh, if you're looking at these computers, they're almost completely identical. However, this is a Standard Plus and this is a Standard. If we spec out a baseline configuration, let's say a 14th generation of i5, a 14500 CPU with 8 gigs of RAM in both and 250 SSD in both, the standard will cost you $700 while the standard plus will set you back by $1,000. That's a $300 difference just to begin with. So what's the difference? The standard plus has a memory card reader and it's also just optional. It's not even installed. You have to pay about $5 extra on the top of that $1,000 just to have this slot filled. If you're looking at the backside of these machines, we're gonna start seeing more difference, but the main thing gonna be inside the case and what kind of cards or what kind of upgrades or what kind of CPUs or RAM can be used. So let me flip these to the backside and we're gonna start going through. So this is a standard regards of monitor output. We only have two options. We have a 4K display port and a full HD HDMI. Yes, it's not even 4K in 2024. If you're looking at the bottom, the plus, we have 4K native display ports, three of them in a row. There is no HDMI at all. So if you have a TV or a monitor HDMI, you're going to need some kind of dongle or adapter. If you go to Amazon, you're looking at these 4K dongles from DisplayPort to HDMI. This starts about five, six dollars. However, you have to look at the specifications on that. And with this Optiplex line, you also have to look at the specification really, really carefully. Another thing to look at is the number of USB ports. Uh, the standard has four, while the standard plus has six. Uh, I worked as a full-time IT professional and on-site tech, uh, and uh, I'm overseeing probably 400 of these Dell Optiplex machines at my job, and this is not a sponsored video, this is not a sponsored channel, and the Dell Optiplex is my favorite number one business class machine. I have a lot of clients coming out from uh, finance, uh, from education, healthcare, manufacturing, uh, law or legal and this is my number one go-to PC if you need a computer I usually show up I put one of that on your desk and I will tell you to see you to six to eight years which normally makes the employee laugh but I'm not joking I've been doing the Dell Optiplex for over 15 or 16 years and this is my experience and this is my expectation when you buy one of these machines the machine will run in 24 7 and they can last easily for a decade uh, or even more. So they are an absolute workhorse. Uh, they are super durable and super reliable. Uh, what other difference do we see on the back side? Uh, now it's going to get down to little things. For example, uh, the Standard Plus has this green connector. It's audio out. This is the one and only audio out. The Standard doesn't have that, which means you're going to have to plug your headphone or speakers to the front. Is it a big deal? No, but last week somebody already complained. What, how, what do you mean you can't plug the cable to the back side of the PC? Why do I have to look at the green cable dangling in front of the PC in my office? And it is true. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, about two years ago they had changed this. So this is what we have. Also, if you're looking at uh, the standard plus, you're going to say, Scott, I see these shiny connectors for the external Wi-Fi antenna. That's because of the plus. No, unfortunately not. This feature is also not included. Uh, with a thousand dollar, that's not gonna get you Wi-Fi, and uh, ninety-nine percent of my clients are all in these business fields. They don't need a Wi-Fi, and if the computer comes with a Wi-Fi, either have to disable it or uh, remove it completely because we cannot afford that the computer is somehow gonna connect to an open network or a rogue network. So we're not doing that. All of my clients are hardwired almost completely. 1% when I need a Wi-Fi, but when I need a Wi-Fi, uh, the Dell Optiplex has a couple options. You can get a Realtek card, you can get an Intel card, could be internal, could be external, like this one which has the external uh, connectors on it for the for the antenna. And this is the best option if your Wi-Fi is spotty or you need the best possible speed and the lowest latency, this is going to give you the best performance because this cable is long enough 
So I don't need to know where is your Wi-Fi access point. It could be on the side of the wall, could be up on a ceiling, could be under us. So I have a freedom to move with this antenna. I have to do a couple speed tests because if I have internal antenna on a computer and if I have an external one, I can double or triple the speed uh, depending on the environment. But this is just a couple dollars more and it's a significantly better option. So this is pretty much uh, the backside. You can see that the standard has a single slotted video card uh, in it. It's also not included. I'm just going to use it as an example and talk about uh, the PCI Express slot speed. Uh, on the bottom, we have a dual slotted card installed is and the plus can only handle with major, major limitation. The dual slotted video cards, you're going to see it once we're going to take the top cover off. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see on the standard, we have these screws. We just have to loosen them up and then the top cover just slides off. While the standard plus has a latch system, we can just with a single motion get rid of it. Uh, as you can see the front bezel, it's very easy to take it off. All we have to do is click on these tabs and it literally falls off, goes away. Same thing with this. So now we're going to start seeing more and more from the motherboard. And this is where also the main difference is going to be. Where is that $300 is actually going to? So there is a 3.5 SATA carry in here. Uh, there is a single screw. You can once you remove it, this thing just literally folds away. And same thing with this, except this is also a latch system. Just pull the latch to the side and a caddy falls off. Uh, what can you put in a caddy? Uh, optical drive, optical drive, 3.5 uh, SATA drive, 3.5 SATA dice, plus you can put an additional SATA device in. So you can put three 2.5 solid state in here if you want to, just max it out the storage, or you can put two 2.5 SATA in here if you need to. Uh, I think Dell specifies that the that the hard drive can be four terabyte. Uh, you can go up to 16, 20 terabyte, nothing will happen, it will work. So now we can see the memory slots. Both of them supports finally DDR5, the standard and a standard plus. The standard has two slots while the standard plus has four. Maximum RAM 64 gig, maximum RAM 128 gig. Uh, what else we can see? We can see that uh, we have one solid state right here, an M2 plus we have two other M2 slots uh, right here, located right here. So we can have three M2, three M2 uh, with the standard plus, and we can have one, just one M2 with the standard. Also CPU, the coolers are kind of similar, but with the standard, we can have an i3 or an i5, while the standard plus starts with an i5, i7 and i9. Can you put an i9 into the standard? Yes, you can, but there is there is no sense to do that. I already did it, and the performance was so embarrassingly low. I didn't even make benchmarks. Uh, this power supply in a standard by default, it's 180 watt. Uh, the standard plus comes with a 260 or a 300 watt power supply. In both cases, we don't have extra pin for graphics cards. Like Scott, uh, I see where you're going. You have a SATA adapter to a six pin or an eight pin and we can use this for a graphics card we could doesn't make any sense even this 3050 oc rtx is maxed out already in this case with a 300 watt power supply so can you just put a 300 watt power supply into the standard and then put something else in it well I thought I can, and I already did. Unfortunately, the motherboard is also limiting how much power can we draw for a CPU. This thing is bolted down to 172 watt, while the standard plus is maxed out at 250. Like Scott, way, way over the 65 watt requirement what our CPU is pulling. Unfortunately, it's not. When we have a short burst or when we have a turbo kicking in, with this 14500, this CPU in here in the standard can pull 130 watt peak, while in here the 14600 can pull 160 watt or even above. And this card from the PCI slot also periodically can pull 90 watt. So that is a lot of power, and the 160 watt power supply is not cutting it. So there's going to be a lot of power 
uh, related throttling and also heat related throttling so let's talk about these blower fans well the idea is great that we are pulling all the hot air and through this funnel we are isolating the hot air from the rest of the components like the power supply the video card uh, the ram and a solid state and everything stays nice and cool and we're pushing the hot air on the back side of the pc which is great but the drawback is the performance the performance of these blower fans are not as good as a regular fan not only that but they also have to work harder which generate a great amount of noise however this is a business class computer we are not allowing that so we're cutting back on a performance uh, of the of the cpu so we don't have to run the fan that high even more throttling so let's see what's going on with these video cards so first of all the standard has let me show you it's easier if i pull this out the standard has 116 slot PCI Express but it's only Gen 3 and we have a lane one slot also Gen 3 right here so we can only put single slotted video cards right here in this blue slot and the problem is the dual slot red card would hit the power supply so physically there is nothing else we can do if you have a standard you can only put single slotted video cards in it and with the basic 160 watt power supply we are really really limiting our option so this is an rx 6500 this is a great option for this model let's look at the standard plus as you can see i have a dual slotted video card but before you are getting way too excited let's see uh, what kind of solution do we have here so we have a gen 4 16 slot right here this blue one obviously we can't put the cord in here because we are hitting the power supply but we have a gen 3 open-ended slot four lane right here right here and this is how we can put this cord in it so most of the cord is literally not even connecting to anything it's just right above this heat skin chilling so if you're looking at this Dell card, this is a Dell branded card. It's the RX 6500. The performance is great. As you can see, there are not even connectors in here. So this guy was pretty much designed to go into this four lane slot. And the performance is great. It works great, but obviously the dual slotted RX 3050 is a much better option. However, the amount of heat this thing is generates, it is, it is not something you cannot notice. However, I have a T1000 and I have an RX uh, 6 RX 550. So we're going to have all these video cards tested in a single video and uh, we're going to get to performance, heat and noise. There are a couple options. If you have any questions regards of these computers, as always, please let me know in the comment section. And as always, Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you at the next video. Scott's out.